Hello, welcome to the session of Need Bites. This is Dr. Pankaj Kumar, your mentor, and today's sessions we will be talking about photomorphogenesis. Now, the first thing, what exactly is a photomorphogenesis? You see, photomorphogenesis is certain light-induced physiological phenomena which is going to affect the growth. Okay, because we know there are certain wavelengths of light that is going to create some sorts of signals, and that signals will eventually uh, induce the genes to produce certain factors and that factors eventually causes some sort of morphological phenomena. So there are two things what we have to discuss under the uh, segments of photomorphogenesis that is photoperiodism and vernalization. Right? Let's talk about first of all photoperiodism. Now what is photoperiodism? The very effect of the light or the duration of light on the floral initiation of flowering is actually known as a photoperiodism. Okay. Now, in order to understand, first of all, we know we have to know that what is a, exactly is a critical photo period. You know, basically, the critical photo period is a that minimum duration of light that is required to induce the flowering process. Now, there are two groups of plants, what one we call long day plants, second what we call short day plants. You know, long day plants are those plants in which the flowering is going to occur during the uh, summer season, we know very well. Because in case of summer, what happens, days are long. And short day plants are those plants in which what happens, that the day length is small or short, as we observed in case of winter. Okay. So, what happens that in case of short day plants, flowering is going to occur only when the exposure is less than the critical day period. Okay. And in case of long day, the flowering is going to occur only when the exposure is more than the critical day length. So what we can say that critical day length is a threshold uh, point which is required to initiate the flowering process. Okay. This is all about the critical day length. Right. So first of all, let's talk about the phytochrome you know the photoperiodic uh, responses are actually done by the phytochrome now where does phytochrome we can find we can find phytochrome within the leaf and that is also within the chloroplast okay so there are various forms of phytochrome right but uh, at this level we will concentrate only on the two things what is pr and pfr form okay and both these forms are actually interconvertible right you can see there PR absorb red light, okay, and PFR is going to absorb the far red light, right. So there are a certain relationship that is going to exist between them, and that relationship is very very important in order to understand the photoperiodic responses, okay. So let's have a look at these relationship. What happens? That absorption of red light by PR convert it into PFR, okay. Similarly, absorption of far red light by PFR convert into PR form. You can see over here also, right. Now in the dark what happens that uh, PFR spontaneously convert back to PR. Okay, so whatever the PR that is accumulated during the day period, they spontaneously get converted into PR but that reaction is slow. Okay, and conversion of PR into PFR is very fast, right. So these are the relationship that exists between them. So let's sum up the relationship what we have discussed. The PR form absorb red light become PFR. The PFR form absorb far right far red light and become PR form. Okay. During the night, what happens that uh, the PFR form gets converted into PR, but this conversion is slow. But the conversion of PR into PFR is very fast or we can say that PFR is active, PR is not active, right. Let us see that how this relationship works in the short day plants at long day plants, okay. But before that, let us try to understand that how phytochrome works. Now what happens when sunlight converts PR into PFR, right, the PFR moves from the cytoplasm and they enter into the nucleus, right. And within the nucleus, they binds to a protein what we call PIF3, that is phytochrome interacting factor 3. Okay. Now, this binding results into 
the gene to encode certain transcription factors and eventually a specific signal in the form of protein is formed right and finally these protein affect the photoperiodic responses so that is how this phytochrome works now have a look at pathway that is controlling the flowering process so which organ receive the photoperiodic stimulus actually it is the leaf so light signal read by the leaf now the moment light is received by the leaf the phytochrome activates kinase signal okay now the duration of the day length determined by phytochrome and that is often compared with the biological clock but phytochrome is not a biological clock it can be compared with the biological clock right so actually the duration of the day uh, results into the activation on behalf of phytochrome just to effect one particular responses because we know very well responses in terms of uh, the uh, long day plants and short day plants is going to be different okay then finally what we will see that leaf is going to release the uh, hormone okay and uh, factor eventually travels from leaf and activates the flowering process okay so this is how the pathway uh, is going to affect during the uh, flowering process okay now let's have a look at first of all short day plants we have already discussed short day plants are those plants in which uh, the flowering is going to occur when the exposure is less than the critical day length okay so you see if this is a condition when the day length is more night period is less definitely it will not flower but on contrary if the night period is more day is less it will flower right but suppose there is going to have interruptions of night period by light okay in that case it will not flower so out of this what we can conclude we can conclude simply one thing that night period is critical for flowering in short day plants right there will be no floral initiation if interruption in night period is going to happen that's why we are saying that night period is critical for flowering and another important thing is that pr phytochrome promotes flowering in short day plants okay so in terms of pr and pfr we can understand the flowering process in short day plants so let's try to understand it the very relationship right now we have studied we have studied that during the day period there is accumulation of pfr so in the very first diagram we can say that here the pfr concentration is very high and since we know very well that for flowering pr is required pfr is not required so that's why it will not flower okay on contrary night what happens that pr form is more and since pr form is required for flowering so that's why it will flower right now the real uh, trick or the real uh, problem is over here now let's try to understand over here in this case what had what happened that here the pr form is formed okay but we know very well that conversion of pr to pfr is very fast so as a, as a result whatever the pr that is formed during this duration of period let it be say 5 uh, gram just i am putting a hypothetical figure so all those 5 grams is getting converted into pfr because here the conversion of pr into pfr is very fast so at this point of time again we have a 5 gram of pfr okay but if we give the night period what will happen from here its journey will start that pfr will slowly getting converted into pr form that is slow so this duration is not sufficient to generate the requisite amount of the pr so that's why it will not flower got it the very relation between pr and, and pfr so that is why in case of short day plants what happens if there is going to have a interruption of night period it will not flower right let's have a look at long day plants in case of long day plants what happens we have already know that here the flowering is going to occur only when the exposure is more than the critical day length so once again see if the day period is more night period is less it will flower on contrary if the night is more day is less it will not flower but surprise surprise you see uh the interruption 
is not going to have any effect on the flowering in case of long type plants. Even in that case, it will flower. I think since we have understood the relation between PR and PFR, we can easily explain it. Let's try to do it. During the day hours, we know very well that actually PFR is formed, right? During night hours, what happens? For this particular duration, what will happen? That uh, PFR will get converted into PR. This conversion is slow. But the moment once again light is given over there, what will happen? Whatever PR form over there, they will immediately get transformed into PFR. And the continuous PFR will keep on forming. So that's why whatever the requisite amount of PFR was required for flowering, that is there. So that is why the interruption of day period during the night is not going to have any effect. I hope the very concept is very, very clear to you. Okay. So what we can conclude? We can conclude that night periods are not critical for flowering. Second, floral initiation, even the night period is interrupted, is not going to have any effect. PFR form of phytochrome is going to promote flowering in case of long day plants. Right? We have one more group of plant, what we call day neutral plant. Now, what are those day neutral plants? Because in case of day neutral plants, what happens? In them, the critical photo period is not in terms of one fixed length, rather in terms of range. And the range, let it be say, range varies from 8 hours to 14 hours. So if the critical photo period is in the form of range, what will happen? That whether it is a winter or summer, every time it is going to fall within that particular range. So that is going to flower every throughout the year. Take an example of rose. We get rose flowers every year, uh, throughout the year. Right? Why? Because there, the critical photo period is going to occur in the form of range only. Right? So that's why the rose, sunflower, these are the typical example of the neat day neutral plant. Okay? So that's all as far as photoperiodism is concerned. So before we conclude, let's discuss one more thing and that is vernalization. Now what is vernalization? You see, the application of cold treatment to initiate plant growth, that is called vernalization. Now I would like to hear differentiate between photoperiodism and vernalization. Uh, listen carefully. In case of photoperiodism, what happens? that photoperiodic stimulus is associated with the floral initiation. I repeat floral initiation. But in case of vernalization, it is related with the plant growth, not any floral initiation. Right? So application of cold treatment, which eventually leads to plant growth. Yes, it is a morphological as well as the reproductive growth, but it is associated with the growth. Then we call it as a vernalization. Okay? So what happens? There are some biennial plants. Okay, naturally there are some biennial plants, right? So, why, why, how, how the life cycle of biennial plants runs? Because if there is a biennial plants within the span of two years, one year the plant is going to receive a cold treatment in terms of a normal winter. Okay, the stimulus is in the form of winter. And the next year it is going to flower. But suppose in those plants, if I give the cold treatment at the time of their germination only, then those biennials can be converted into animals. And that is, this is, the, this is the principle that is being utilized in case of vernalization. So what happens at the time of germination of uh, the seed? Okay, the cold treatment is given over there, right? And this cold treatment is uh, perceived by the stem apex, okay? Or we can say plumule. That, that is the reason which actually uh, received the stimulus, okay? And uh, once the stimulus is received, then what happens? That uh, uh, the hypothetical hormone called vernaline is uh, synthesized. Vernaline is nothing but it's another form of gibberellic acid. Okay, and they induce the plant growth, and eventually the plant complete the, its reproductive growth. Right. So this is all about the vernalization. Okay. That's all for today's session. Thank you.